Welcome, my name is Matthew, and today we're going to be talking about re swapping, don't go into that, rack and pinion steering onto a 1963 Buick Riviera. A lot of baggage needs to be unpackaged in that last sentence. So, to give this car rack and pinion steering the first time, I picked out a center takeoff style rack and pinion from the junkyard that fit most of my dimensions or I have made it fit my dimensions. For the most part it's worked perfect. Uh, we don't have bump steer and it turns. Now that two victories. But there was one big problem. Since the steering arms on the Buick are very long on the spindles, that kind of made it so I need more throw to actually go full lock. It's a weird geometry problem, and I'm not going to solve calculus for you today. Let it know that if you've got really long steering arms, you're going to have to make up for that travel with more travel. To solve all my problems in life, I did some research and I talked to the boys at Flaming River Steering. We talked about just making a custom rack and pinion, but realized my dimensions were so close to the universal rack and pinion, the FR490, no, FR400, it didn't make any sense to spend an extra $400 for the small compromises they were going to make to make it just fit perfect off the shelf. If you want to see an unboxing or some in-depth specs on the Universal Flaming River Rack and Pinions that they kind of don't have the best resources for over at Flaming River, check out this other video. I'll link it in the description. I went and unboxed this thing and measured every dimension that I could to help other people try to understand how these things fit because I couldn't find this information when I needed it. Flaming River uses these aluminum brackets to bolt the rack and pinion to the other things. I've got a couple holes drilled on the plate here, and that's what's actually going to bolt it into the cross member. I only installed washers on this side because it's actually not going to be on the cross member. This is going to be on the cross member, so we're going to use a couple spacers. Uh, they're just washers, let's be real people. To actually space this off the cross member the same thickness as our bolt heads. Click, click. Probably good. That makes got a little bit of power steering fluid on this Allen wrench. That makes it super. Okay, there it goes. That makes it super easy to turn. Okay. Be sure to get this guy. Okay. Be sure to get this clamp in the right spot the first time. The reason is it will rip the powder coat off of this beautiful, beautiful new rack and pinion the first time you fully tighten it. Once you pop off the yellow plugs that, you know, seal this thing up from the factory, you'll see that the upper right port is labeled pressure and the lower left port is labeled return. That is the most convenient thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Now we can just thread our fittings in there with the smaller size going to the pressure and the larger size going to the return. Oh, that was loosening it. Okay, that's not, uh, let's just not do that ever again. And, um, yeah, this didn't didn't work out exactly what I, I, I thought, but we'll just loosen that. Yep. And go over here and try to jam you over here with all my thumb finger force 900. It, okay. And then we'll just keep twisting it and you'll just keep ignoring all that pressure I put on the fitting and just keep turning. You know what? Just keep turning. I don't even care at this point. That's Fine. That looks perfect and they're probably going to leak anyway, so don't worry about it. Someone who swaps LS engines into everything they own, uh, I know my way around a shaft. My superpower, which I've used over years of sadness, is cutting steering shaft lengths right the first time. Until you unlock that useless achievement, um, just grab some wood dowel rods and use those to chop up. Once you get that steering shaft cut, take these set screws and just throw them in the garbage. Like, I get the idea that they're supposed to go all the way through, but something about drilling a giant hole through the shaft just doesn't sit well with me. I personally like going to the hardware store and getting some extra short ones, and then drilling the steering shafts so they can be recessed in it. I then coat everything with a liberal supply of Loctite um, to keep my problems from causing more problems. I'm going to talk quickly about custom made tie rod sleeves. I see a lot of people get hung up on this when they're trying to put random things together. I've got it threaded for a 5 8 left hand thread on this side to go into a heim joint and a 9 16 by 18 right hand thread on this side so that way when I spin it, it'll actually push and pull the tie rods out. Just like a real car. Well, this is a real car. This is. Okay. When you need custom made tie rod sleeves, the, I have the answer for you. Just call up your buddy Dan at DCA Race Fab and he'll make them for you. 
It's that easy. You're gonna need your outer tie rod or heim joints thread, and you're also gonna need to get whatever your steering linkages or inner tie and rod situation is. He'll cook you up the best tie rod sleeve that money can buy. The last real step here is gonna be giving her the worst alignment she's ever seen in her life. So we're gonna take a, a level, a zip tie her to this wheel, and we'll probably take another level and zip tie it on the other side, and then use the cheapest tape measure we can find uh, to give her, I don't know, how about a 16th of toe in, and then uh, we'll just pray that it can drive to the alignment shop. Well, now that we got it in here, you just need to sit back and admire, because she is a beaut, Clark. Well, that pretty much wraps everything up. Like, not everything, because on the whole, we made the car about 32% better. The steering is like 147% better. But the whole car has still got some, well, meh. It is what it is. So if this helped you out and you liked it, neat. So, have a good one.